Just in time for Halloween, I have a spooky book project for you titled House of Horrors. I've packed it with all kinds of creepiness for my new image sets and other embellishments. It's an easy to construct book and let's get started and I'll show you how I did it. For this project, I'm using some pre-cut chipboard shapes. Uh, the first is a set of three haunted houses. And then the next is tombstones. I'm using two of these shapes and I'm gonna alternate them. So I'm gonna have five different uh, pages and then I'll be able to cover each side, which will give me actually 10, 10 surfaces to decorate. And I thought that would give it a little bit more interest and, and make the roof line a little bit more interesting. And then after I do that, I'm going to start working on the method of binding these together. And I'm going to do it using some chipboard shapes. And I'm actually gonna show you two different ways of binding these. I started by working on the method I'm going to use to bind it with and I started cutting strips of chipboard and you see six here but I only needed five. You just need however many pages you have, you need one for each page. And uh, how I decided what the size was going to be is I looked at the shapes that I was working with and the straight edge of the haunted house shape, it was a little bit less than five inches. So that was the height or length of my chipboard strip. And then you want it wide enough that um, you're going to be able to punch the holes in it and you know you don't want those holes too close to the edges of the chipboard so that the ribbon doesn't pull through or um, the other method I'm going to show you doesn't pull through. So um, I decided on three quarters of an inch. And then after I did that, I cut paper to cover those and you want two strips of paper for each strip of chipboard. And the size of the paper, of course, I need it to cover the chipboard, but I also need it to be uh, wide enough that it gives me a lot of surface area to glue that to the, uh, the chipboard house and the chipboard tombstones. So I cut the, it the height, which is a little less than five inches. It's like, I think it was like four and, and, and uh, 15, 16, something like that. And then... Um, I decided I needed about an inch more, so I, with the width, it was three quarters of an inch plus another inch, and then that gave me uh, something wide enough to cover the chipboard and to attach it to the house. Now, before I attached anything, um, you'll see black paint everywhere. I inked all my edges, or I painted all my edges. I painted everything black, anything that you could possibly see, and then even some of it you didn't, because I'm I just started painting and I ended up painting all of the edges. So I did all that before I started gluing things together. And so now here you see I've attached uh, a piece of chipboard to uh, the paper that I cut out. And uh, on, the, on the left side you see it faced up and on I flipped it over to um, on the right side so you can see what it looks like on the other side. And now I'm going to attach it to the first um, chipboard uh, haunted house piece. And here is where you have to make a decision. If you are just going to use ribbon, then you can butt that right up against the house. You don't have to leave any gap at all because when you, if you've ever done a book and you've bound it with just tying ribbon through holes, um, you know that the, the book, the pages will slide on the ribbon back and forth. And so you don't need anything to uh, make it rock back and forth like you do with a, a book. So if you're not going to use the other method that I'm going to show you, which is po rigid posts like you see in a scrapbook, um, you don't need it to move back and forth. So as you see here, um, I did it with a, a small gap between the house shape and the chipboard shape, and it's about a quarter of an inch. And that's gonna give you space for that house to rock back and forth so you can open the pages, even though that spine is stiff. But if you're not gonna do it that way, then you don't have to have a gap there at all. And so the next picture you can see, I just flipped it over so you could see what it looks like glued to the to the um, the chipboard house. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to glue the another strip of paper on the other side. So now that it co completely covers that chipboard strip and attaches on the other side to the house. And then what you want to do, if you are using the method of posts, now you want to rock it back and forth and kind of create a crease there, a seam. And then that way, once you put it together, you'll be able to open that page back and forth, even though that spine is rigid. Now on the tombstone shapes, um, they have some areas that jut out on the bottom, of course, to make it look more like a tombstone. And you might want to consider trimming some of that off either completely or trimming it down some. Because when you go to attach the spine to that, especially if you need that extra space for the for the ability to rock back and forth, you might find that there's uh, the paper doesn't completely go as far as it needs to because there's just too much space with that little that little jut out. So I ended up I didn't completely take it out, but I trimmed it down a little bit. And then you can see in the next picture, you can see that I still have the gap there, 
um, but it's not it it's it still has enough space for me to glue it onto that one inch of extra paper. Um, so it, I didn't trim it all off. You don't have to, but you could if you wanted to. And you still have the tombstone shape at the top and on the other side. Now, once you get done doing that to all your pages, however many you happen to have, in my case it was five, then you now want to work on punching your holes. And so to do that, I clip together a couple of the books and uh, punch the holes at the same time. So the clip helps keep everything aligned and straightened. And I'm going to end up putting three holes. You'll want to put in the number of holes that work for the book you're doing. You don't need a ton of them, but if you're doing it with ribbon, if you do too few, your book's going to be really wonky. The pages aren't just going to go uh, back and forth, but they'll slide up and down and be uneven. So you do want to have enough in there. And so with something that's this, this width, about five inches or height, I should say, at three holes works pretty nicely. And so once I punch those holes, then I use one of those as a template to punch the holes in the next ones until I get everything punched. The nice thing about books like this which is a little bit more difficult with the tunnel books, which you just saw me do in the last few videos, is that you can work on each page separately because you're not going to bind it till you get to the end. So you don't have to worry about pages interfering with each other or dimensional stuff getting in the way. So you can just, now that you've got your spine on, you can cover them with your decorative paper and then get busy on doing whatever embellishments that you want to do. As usual, with my projects. For this one, I created some new collage sheets and digital image kits, the first of which are House of Horrors 1 and House of Horrors 2, and that is filled with all of the all the spooky stuff you see on all the pages. Chairs, furniture of every kind, ghouls, ghosts, spooky pictures, candles, cats, you name it. The next is spooky portraits, and this is a whole bunch of portraits that are really creepy where I've altered pictures to make them look like they're ghosts or they're like they're um, werewolves or vampires or headless people, skeleton people. And you get some of those in the House of Horror sheets, but this whole uh, spooky portraits, then you get nothing but those and they come in multiple sizes. And then there's also a half sheet of candles. I used a lot of candles in this. I think it gives it a lot of creep factor. And so there are some candles in the House of Horror pages, but this is just solid candles. There's like 40 something different candles. And then another sheet that I used, uh, particularly on the front, is a, this is an older sheet, it's uh, a half sheet of lanterns. So if you want to add um, some lanterns to the outside of the house. And then there's the digital kit, the House of Horrors. Now it's got everything in those first three collage sheets. It's got House of Horrors 1, House of Horrors 2, all the spooky portraits, and a ton more images. So there's a hundred images in this set. So if you want to work with the images individually, you just print what you want, you want to resize them, the digital kit is really a nice way to go. The other thing I used as an old sheet is uh, the ghost sheet. And I use that to uh, put images behind the, um, the windows that you will see on the front and on the inside and on the back. And then the front door, I used uh, an old sheet called, our old digital kit called Old Windows and Doors. And it's just full of old windows and doors. And again, because it's a digital, kit, you can size those and make it fit the project. So for instance, the door that I used, I made it a little bit larger so it fit the scale of everything else I was doing. Now I'll walk you through each of the pages and what I did. For the front of the house, I am using two different papers uh, for the stonework and the top paper on the roof is kind of a stone paper, but I thought it looked roof-like. And then the door from the digital kit that I talked about earlier, you see the creepy hand coming through the door so I cut it in half so I could get the hand in there. And then you see lanterns from the lantern sheet and the gate, now that is a, a chipboard gate, a die cut uh, chipboard, actually it's a wood laser cut, I'm sorry, it's a wood laser cut gate. And I wanted it to stand out from the house, I didn't want to glue it right against the, the front there, so I added some beads to the back of that so that it would give it some space. And then I painted it black and then tapped on some grays just to give it more of a mottled look. And then you can see one of the vampire women and a cat that's an acrylic black cat and then uh, a pumpkin image from from the uh, sheet and then of course a couple of uh, chipboard bats and you see the window up there that is a laser cut um, wood window and then I've mounted one of the ghost uh, images behind it and then also in the gate I'll just mention those are two skull beads and I actually put a little uh, orange rhinestone in each eye just to give it a little bit more interest. Now the next uh, page that you see is the uh, first page inside the house and you've got a creepy clock, you've got the little uh, uh, boy, he's a, a, a werewolf boy, you've got some of those creepy pictures on the walls and 
all of the uh, pages are covered first with decorative paper. And then to kind of give it some molding, I used uh, black Dresden at the bottom, like a thin strip of black Dresden, and then a more uh, a fancier one up to, to kind of do uh, railing at the top. And it kind of differentiates between the roof. It just kind of cuts it up, I thought, and makes it look better. And then one of my favorite images is the, um, the chest full of creepy looking dolls and then the crow uh, hanging over them. And then there's spiders and spider webs all over the chest. Now the next one uh, probably is the most, most, I would say, most complicated of all the pages. And the creamy, creamy worn thing that, uh, paper you see in the back, that's the first layer. And then what I used is I used a, um, a plastic mold. It's a, it's a, it comes in two, two in, in the set. There's one that does bricks and one that does wood. And I used this with paper clay. And the reason I chose paper clay over polymer clay is I wanted to cut it up so that it wasn't just solid brick, but it looked like it was crumbling and falling apart, and there were just bits of it here and there on the, still left on the wall. And so I rolled out my paper clay as thin as I could get it, and then I put the, the uh, plastic mold on it, and then I did this on a cutting board so that I could pick it up, put it on the floor, and I actually stepped on the, uh, the mold just to get it really pressed down into the clay. I removed that, and then I, um, I just used a cutter to cut away the, the rough edges. And then I started to let it dry. Now, with paper clay, I know I've mentioned this many times before, but it likes to curl and warp. So you've got to watch it. And if you just let it dry a little bit on the top, you can then put a little bit of weight on it with a paper towel in between. And I, a, lot of, a lot of times I like to put a paper towel underneath it too, because that'll pull the moisture out. And so if you can't watch it, you might want to do that and let it continue to dry. But it's never going to dry completely if you've got it covered up. So you are going to have to have some time where you can watch it and make sure that it lays flat or push it down flat. Now, um, once it was almost dry, I started cutting it apart into the pieces that I wanted and uh, then painting it. First, I painted the whole thing beige because that was going to be the color of the uh, grout line. And then I used kind of a burgundy paint for the, uh, the bricks themselves on top. And you don't be perfect. I didn't, I didn't, I just put one coat on it. I didn't worry about it being messy. This is supposed to look like it's falling apart. So perfection is not needed here. And you actually will find that when you paint the paper clay, if it's, if it's particularly if it's thin like this clay is, um, it, it will give you flexibility again. So you do have one more opportunity with something like this to bend it straight if it's decided to warp. And then, of course, I've got the vampire woman in the back with blood on her chest and her coffin chained up in the background. And then this is just a chipboard uh, die cut um, gate that I have on, on the front. Now, this actually had more spokes uh, in it, uh, more wrought iron railing in it. But I cut some of those away uh, because you couldn't see her as well. And I really wanted you to be able to see her face and her fangs and, and the blood on the front of her. And then, of course, on the front of that, I've got candles because, again, I think it just makes it look a lot creepier. The next page is more furniture, more creepy pictures. And then the molding at the top is a uh, die-cut chipboard piece that's a border with, uh, with bats on it. So that, that was something unique to use in addition to the Dresden that I'm using on some of the other pages. And then, of course, you see the Dresden on the bottom again. And all those are just images from the collage sheets. The next page is a really creepy one. And here you have a ghoul, say, in his laboratory, it got all kinds of creepy things under glass, and you got a black cat and a, and a, a, a potion bottle. That's a, a wood laser cut uh, piece that the, um, the, uh, as you look down at the bottom on the left. And then you've got a spell book and, and uh, candles again and creepy pictures. So, and then you've got the, uh, at the top, you've got the candelabra with the skull. And the next one, again, just more furniture, more creepy people. You can see the molding that I've used again, uh, candles again, pumpkins, witch's hat, just more of the same thing. And then now you've got another one with, uh, this has got some of my favorite images in it. It's got, along with the creepy, uh, creepy portraits, it's also got a mirror where a skull is about to come through it. And you've got the candles with... Uh, with faces and whatnot on them. And then up at the top, you've got the spider with the, with the, um, the uh, doll head climbing down uh, onto, the, the, uh, onto the furniture. And then the spooky uh, pumpkin and whatnot over on the chair. Now you've got another really creepy page and you've got another ghoul. In the background, you'll see a guillotine. That's actually in the digital kit. 
and I've just painted some blood on it and I've got a bucket with a creepy doll head and a, uh, a skeleton. Of course, you see the spider coming down. Now, the spider webs that you see uh, and the spider itself, this is just, um, this is a, a little laser cut paper. It's like black uh, cardstock that's been laser cut. And then you see uh, a, uh, a cage in the back with a skeleton. Now, the coffin that's got blood dripping all over it and splattered and it's got scratches. I actually took a sharp object and scratched it. That is a die cut chipboard uh, coffin. It actually comes with three pieces so you can make it into a little book. I just used the front part with the, uh, with the bat that's cut out of it. And there's actually silver paper behind that. It's harder to see because once I started splattering it and getting it all yucky, um, it, it kind of hid some of that. So this is just like one of the creepier pages as well. Now again, we're back to furniture. Now the difference in this one, other than just different, uh, different paper or different images and, and different background paper, is look at the border at the top. So this is just like the bat one, except this one is um, a die cut chipboard, one with uh, spider webs on it. And then because this is the last page on the inside, you can see the moon, the, the blood moon in behind, and then you got uh, bat wings kind of peeking out. And then if you look at the bottom, you can see uh, a little bit of the tombstone that's going to be on the back. Now, with something like this, it's really easy to put some things on the back that peek out past uh, the edges because it's the last page in the book, so it won't get in the way of anything. So on the last page, I'm using um, the same paper I did on the front page to do the roof and the wall. And of course, now you can see the whole blood moon and a bunch of bats. And again, I've got some, you saw the round uh, wood uh, laser cut windows. These are same thing, they're wood laser cut, but they are the Gothic arches. And then I've got uh, some Dresden as the trim. And then you see the blood fountain in the background. Now that I intended to put in the digital kit, but it got left out. And so I have that for free for you on my on my blog. So if you go over there, you'll find that and you can download it and use it. And then I've got this vine going, and those are just individual stems of black rosebuds and roses. And if you just twist the um, the stems together, and uh, you can just create a nice little vine. And then I've got uh, the the uh, skeleton guy, our woman um, from the from the collage sheets, and then two of those laser cut tombstones. And if you just to to make it look kind of modeled, if you just start with the darker color and go lighter, paint it with solid with the dark color, like say a dark gray and then um, then use lighter colors and stipple those on, but don't cover everything, then you can kind of create that modeled look. And then of course you see the candles again. Finally, I just wanted to show you a different method of binding these together. And I'm using these uh, metal posts. They're scrapbook uh, posts. So you, if you've seen scrapbooks, you've, you've seen these posts. And you can buy these separately. And um, you can either buy uh, ones that you smaller ones that you can use for extensions to a scrapbook post you already have or you can buy the whole post itself so if you're doing something like this you want to make sure that whatever you purchase doesn't just have uh, extensions to make the uh, current scrapbook post longer but it has the uh, screw caps for each end so here you can see uh, a picture an example of you know you, you get different type uh, different lengths of posts which they can be screwed together to make a longer one and then you've got two different kind of caps that go on each end of that. And then you can see it screwed together. So instead of putting the, um, the ribbon through the holes, you can put these posts through the holes. Now, if you were going to do that, I would suggest, of course, you know, you don't want this silver metal showing. You probably want to put something on top of the ends of the post, uh, either an image or some paper or maybe glue a charm on there, something like that, just to dress it up. And then here you can see what the book looks like when it's open. And you can see it's, it looks very different than uh, the kind with the ribbon because uh, the pages are butted right up against each other. You don't see that uh, the open spine area where the ribbon is and where the holes are as you do when you have the ribbon version. And you can see now why you needed that to rock back and forth so that you could open those pages. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And for more information, there is a link in the description area of the video here that has a link to my blog with more pictures the supply lists, information on the collage sheets, and also the free image of the blood fountain. Stay tuned because within the next week I'm going to have another video up there walking you through how to create a book of spells.